our God cannot do no wrong. And the reason is because there is no wrong in him. Every good and perfect gift comes from our God. Comes from our God. You will only receive what is good and perfect. Lift up your hand and give God praise. Give him praise. For the Lord is good. Ah, the Lord is good. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. Father, we thank you for the testimonies. Thank you for the miracles. Thank you for our children. And Lord, thank you for the month of enlargement. Lord, we yield to your word so that we can be built up. Amen. The word is our life. Amen. Lord, we humble ourselves before your word and pray that the spirit of God will minister the word to us. Amen. That we will be profitable hearers. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. we will be profitable hearers. Amen. And the word of the Lord will do you good. Amen. Bring blessings into your life. Amen. Bring healing into your life. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Please take your seat. I want to welcome you to this Super Sunday communion service. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We were not supposed to have communion today. When John called me yesterday and said, Daddy, are we having communion? I said, no. But by the time I started preparing for service, I had it in my spirit that we should have communion. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I had it in my spirit. So it was quite early anyway. So I picked my phone. I wanted to send a message to Pastor Isaac that please communicate to the leaders that we are going to have communion. And as I was typing, 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 his own message came, informing all the leaders that we have communion. Praise the Lord. And so while I was typing to inform him, to inform everybody that we have communion, now he informed me that we'll be having communion. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So you know the Spirit really wanted us to have communion. Praise the Lord. It is Super Sunday, and it's the day we are summarizing the message on submission. Amen. Amen. I may not preach long today by the help of the Holy Spirit. If you, if you don't mind, if I don't preach long today. Oh yes, oh yes, as the Spirit leads. Praise the Lord. We had a very wonderful outreach on Friday and Saturday. It was beautiful. Beautiful. Praise the Lord. I want to thank every one of you that was there yesterday and day before yesterday. And it can only get better. We'll be there again this Friday and Saturday. Praise the Lord. And every weekend in October, we are going to be there winning souls for Jesus. Amen. Remember, when we go out for evangelism, our primary mandate is to tell people the word of God. Amen. Amen. Our primary mandate is to preach the word to them. Very often, we narrow it down to those that will come to church. We know, and that's the mistake we make. Listen, there are people that will hear the word and get born again and may not step into this church. And God will take them to another church. Because as far as God is concerned, there is one that plant, there is one that water, there is one that harvest. Praise the Lord. But no one loses their reward. 
No, no, no. Among the three, no one loses their reward. So don't be disappointed that all the people that we preach to are not in this church. There are people that will be in this church that we didn't preach to either. Because this is God. God takes you to where you will be nurtured. God takes you to where the word will help you. And he is the one that makes that decision, not we. He only said to us, go and preach. Amen. Amen. We talk about so much about the day of Pentecost that Peter preached 3,000 gave their life to Christ, isn't it? Yes, and we use that as we should, actually, because it's the word of God. But also, the 12 went out and preached. The 70 went out and preached. They didn't come back with any soul. True or false? True, Read Luke chapter 9. Read Luke chapter 10. And Jesus went through all the villages and the cities and preached. And very often, he didn't come back with any believer. Amen. What we are called to do is to minister the word to them. Let them hear. What God will do with that word is his business. Praise the Lord. And the word becomes a witness against them if they don't change, if they don't repent. So our job is to saturate everywhere with the word of God. And so that nobody will say they didn't know. Praise the Lord. So we'll continue to do it throughout the month, throughout the month of October. We'll be in Agege every Friday, every Saturday, 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock. Every Friday, every Saturday, throughout the month of October. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And when you are just coming, just wear a white top. Don't say because of white you will not come. If you don't have white, come with what you have. Amen. Amen. Nothing should limit you in serving God. Now, like I said, today we are summarizing submission. Should a Christian be out of submission? No. Should every Christian be in submission? Yes. Why? Because God says so. Romans 13. If you have your Bible, you can open it. The Word of God says, let every soul let every soul. Are you a soul? Yes, sir. Then the Bible says that you should be subject to the governing authorities. That's the word of God. So the first reason why we must be in submission is because God commands us to be. It's not a question of choice. It's not a question of choice. It's a question of obedience to God's word. Be under authority. Be under authority. Praise the Lord. Now, in um, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21, Paul said to, that, to us that we should submit to one another. We should do what? Submit to one another. That's what the Bible says. Say we should submit to one another. So, apart from submitting to governing authorities, Governing authorities. Like I said to you, the book of Romans is not written to a church. The book of Romans is written to Christians living in Rome where the Romans were in authority. And Paul was telling Christians there, for you to have peace and quietness, submit to their authority. Amen. But the book of Ephesians is written to the church in Ephesus. And so Paul is talking to the church. So when Paul says that we should submit to one another. That was the first thing Paul said. Before verse 22, that Paul said, Wife, submit to your own husband. But unfortunately, we understand wives submit to your own husbands, especially the men. Married men know that scripture. So well. If they don't know any other scriptures, they know the scripture. Wives, submit to your husband. But before that scripture, the Bible also said that husband and wife should submit to each other. It's not a contradiction. It's not a contradiction. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let me explain it this way. You married a leader. You married a leader. You knew she was a leader. And you went and proposed and married her. 
Maybe she was uh, in the worship team. She was a lead vocal or she was a backup. But she's, she's appointed to do something in church. And you know that when you married her. And then when you people got married, you, you are just a brother. Praise the Lord. You are a brother with that portfolio in church. Do you understand? That means you just come to church. We just come to church. And so she agreed to marry you because love has no discrimination. Amen. And then at home now, you start quoting, you start quoting the scripture. Wives, submit to your husband. You are right. She too will quote her own. Praise the Lord. Hebrews 13, 17. What does it say? You see, you don't know that part. And that is why you need to start, come and project Hebrews 13, 17 for me. Is it taking them time? Because you need to be equipped with the word of God. Amen. Amen. So, we get to Hebrews 13, 17. <laughs> the Bible is complete, oh. <laughs> so, when the man that is the head quotes, wife, submit to your own husband. The wife says, yes, sir, I will. I said, honey, I want to show you another scripture. He says, obey your spiritual leaders and submit to them, recognizing their authority over, for they are keeping watch over, over your souls. Is that not the Bible? So you may be the head by marriage, but she is the head by ordination. Which one is greater, the husband or the wife now? I didn't say it, oh. I didn't say it. Praise the Lord. Jesus said to us that that which is from above is above all. Praise the Lord. So, understand the scriptures very well. The best thing that man can do is that after you have gotten married, he needs to build up his spiritual man. Amen. He needs to build up his spiritual life. He needs to grow. He needs to, otherwise, he wouldn't understand the dictates of the word of God. It is true. It is true that the Bible says that wives should submit to their husbands. It's also true that the Bible says submit to your own spiritual leaders. Whether they are wives. When God said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, this is what he's talking about. And so you see somebody that is a deaconess in church and go and submit to a brother at home. No, you are out of balance. You are out of what? Balance. You need to understand the way the word of God works. And there is a system you will run in your home. God's blessing will not be there. There is a system you will run. God's blessing will not be in your home. And that is why, listen, you can win an argument with your wife and lose the destiny with God. You hear what I said? You can lose, you can win with your wife, but you will lose with God. But be in a position where you can win with God. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. That is the truth. That is the truth I'm telling you. So the Bible says we should submit to one another. And the submission opens the door of blessings and promotion. If you look at Jacob submitting to Laban, Jacob got blessed, even though that Laban cheated him severally, changed his wages severally. But God blesses the one that obeys his word. And so Jacob got blessed. Amen. You look at Joseph. Joseph was submitted to Pharaoh. 
Let's start from Potiphar. He was submitted to Potiphar. Joseph was submitted to Potiphar. And then he was submitted to Pharaoh. The Bible recorded. The Bible recorded. In Exodus chapter 1, verse 6, and Joseph died. Joseph died, submitted to Pharaoh all his life. It's not that he made some money. He said, well, we can leave Egypt now. We have become big. We can. No. There are things that happen when you submit yourself. You bring blessings to those behind you. If Hagar did not go back to submit to Sarah, Ishmael wouldn't have had a destiny. The destiny of Ishmael was born out of the obedience and submission of Hagar to Sarah. Many of us don't know. The Bible said it was only after Joseph died in Egypt that the Israelites began to suffer. Because the blessings they were enjoying in Egypt was as a result of Joseph's submission. It's not everybody that will be an MD of a company. It's not everybody that will be a pastor of a church. Are you hearing me? It's not everybody that we lead. There are those that will be led. Some of us can make it just following instructions. Some of us can make it just being where we are called to be. There is this arrogant attitude. I want to do my own thing. I want to start my own thing. I want to. Is that what God wants you to do? Is that what God wants you to do? We need to reprogram our thinking. We need to change our mentality. There are people that are in church, but they are not under any authority. That's a problem. It's a problem. Because you will hear the word of God, you will select the one you want to obey. I keep telling you, the word of God is not a buffet. The word of God is not what? A buffet. You don't pick and choose what you want to eat. No, you eat the whole scriptures. You take the whole word. You take the whole word. If you want the word of God to work for you, take the whole word. Nothing less than a whole Bible will produce a whole Christian. Nothing. If you pick and choose the scriptures, it will affect you. It will affect you. What you do is submit yourself to the entirety of God's word. Obey the word. Obey the word. Obey the word. Hagar left Sarah because she was harsh. And the angel of the Lord has said, go back and submit to her harshness. Of course we don't like that. Peter, writing to us in First Peter, let's open that and read. Praise the Lord. First Peter chapter 2, verse 18. Amen. Amen. First Peter. First Peter chapter 2, verse 18. He says, Servants, be submissive to your masters. Is that in your Bible? He said, With all fear. With all what? Fear. The word fear there is reverence. I know God has not given us a spirit of fear. I know that. Amen. Amen. He says, be submissive to your masters. I think that's amplified. He says, with all proper respect. Not only to those who are good and kind, but also to those who are what? Unreasonable. Unreasonable. And there are too many unreasonable masters around. Peter said it differently here. Peter said, Peter said, be submissive to your masters with all fear, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the harsh. Submit to those that are harsh. That's the word of God. There is a reason why you are under them and they are harsh. There is a reason. They want to do something in you. There is something that God wants to use them to do in your life. And you need to be under their authority for you to have your destiny. If 
you are not ruled. You will never be a ruler. If you are never led, you will never lead. Praise the Lord. If you are never commanded, you will never command. Don't you see it? What you say is what you reap. When you live lawlessly, you will reap lawlessly. Nobody will obey you. Nobody will submit to you. Have you not noticed? Rebellious parents bring up rebellious children. Don't you see? Don't you understand that lawlessness is a spirit? Lawlessness is the opposite of submission. Amen. Amen. It is the opposite of submission. When you are not under authority, you are not under grace. The word of God is very clear on the subject. Submit, submit, submit. You don't submit to judge, you submit to obey. Peter said, not only to those that are good and gentle, you should submit. He said, submit to those that are unreasonable. Submit to those that are harsh. Submit to those that are mean. Submit to them. Why? Because Peter said, this is commendable. For this is what? Commendable. If because of conscience towards God, one endures grief, suffering wrongfully. What Peter is saying that submission is the will of God. If you are out of submission and you are a Christian, something in your spirit should be telling you you are, you, are, you are not living the right way. You are not living the right way. You don't select who to submit to. We are called to be in submission. Imagine if Jacob had submitted to Laban. He wouldn't have two wives that would have produced the 12 tribes. Think about it. Think about it. Praise the Lord. Even in the area of marriage, even in the area of marriage, even in the area of marriage, and I know that this is not popular. This is not popular. What I'm about to say is not popular. But we don't preach popular sermon. We preach the word of God. Praise the Lord. You can marry a woman. You can marry a woman. And you and that woman are at the same level, financially speaking, meaning that you depend on your income. Praise the Lord. And the woman works for a boss. A boss. And after you got married, she introduced you to the boss. And she works there and she has been working there. And now when you become the husband, you began to encourage your wife to do the work better. Praise the Lord. You begin to encourage your wife, inspire your wife and all that. In so doing, you begin to get favor from the boss of your wife. Let's say this man is loaded. And every time he sees you around, he says, why are you here? He says, oh, I came to help my wife do this. I came to wait on my wife so that we can go home together. And you are doing it. You are doing it. And the man begins to observe you that, oh, you must really be a good man for you to be taking care of your wife like this. You are supportive and all that. A year, nothing happens. Two years, happens. three years, happens. four years. Happens. One day, the man will send for you. Praise the Lord. He said, by the way, I see you around the house. What do you do? He said, uh, I'm a technician. He said, what do you technish? <laughs> Praise the Lord. He said, radio, TV. Radio, TV. That's what you technish. He said, okay, 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 okay. You know, you know, your wife is like a daughter to me. And she has been faithful in my house. You know, today, take five million and help your business. You see, Grace, her submission has extended grace to you. He said, take five million. You know what has happened? Your recognition of the authority over your wife 
God has used it to bless you indirectly. And I can tell you, there are many marriages in poverty because the man chose to be the head and ended up with empty pocket. Yes, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. It was only after Joseph died that Israel began to suffer in Egypt. As long as Joseph was in submission to Pharaoh and he died in submission to Pharaoh, Israel prospered and increased. What do you want? Do you like to suffer? No. You say you know who you are. You say you are 50 years. Nobody will tell you what to do. 50 years with what now? Now, you don't know that 50 years is 5 zero. Five, zero. You have nothing. Amen. Amen. And the Bible said, the, 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 the wonderful thing about it is that the Bible said, God will resist the proud. When you are not in submission, God will resist you. Because, listen, he gives grace to the humble. He gives grace to the humble. When you are not in submission, you will lack grace. You will have disgrace. Look into your life. Make up your mind. Make up your mind. Place yourself under spiritual authority. Place yourself under governing authority. You work in a company. All you talk about the boss is bad things. He doesn't hear you, but heaven hears you. And Jesus, if you are not faithful in that man, who will give you your thing? Who will give you your own? Luke chapter 16. If you are not faithful in another man's things, who will give you your own? Many people became poor. The Bible says that God will resist the proud. As you are paid your salary, it evaporates. Your salary evaporates. You know why? Your spirit is lawless. You go to church. You fast. You pray. You do all those things. But you see, ah, if only you will learn to be under authority. Let's look at the example of Jesus. The example of Jesus to us. Amen? Amen. Because Jesus is our perfect example, Philippians chapter 2. I told you that submission is relinquishing control. You submit. You, every control you have, you relinquish it. You give it to another. You give it to another. You give it to another. Praise the Lord. You may be the head of the woman, but the woman knows her way with God in prayer. And so, <laughs> you see, you see, some families, they have morning, morning devotion. Morning devotion, praise the Lord. Morning devotion. And then you see a deaconess. A deaconess. She is married. They have three children. And the husband is not matured in the things of God. And every morning, the man that is not mature will carry the Bible. All of you listen to me. This is what the Bible says. Even when he is teaching incorrectly. Praise the Lord. He say, all of you, listen. I am the head. So all of you should listen. And the deaconess, an ordained deaconess of the church of the living God will be there and the husband will be talking rubbish. And she says it's submission. The same husband will get drunk within the week. And then in the morning, he will say, listen, all of you, let me tell you, forget what pastor said in church. You should be ashamed of who ordained you. It doesn't work like that. No, it doesn't work like that. Praise the Lord. And that is why the Bible says, can two agree? You see, two cannot work together except they agree, right? Yes. Now, be careful in the area of marriage. 
Marry your level. Did you hear what I said? Marry what? You don't think that's important? Go ahead now. You will come for counseling. We will cancel you. After counseling you, what will we say? Go home and endure. That's all. Praise the Lord. No pastor will cancel you and say, go and carry your bag and come to church. No pastor will do that. We will cancel you. After we have canceled you, we say, Pastor, pray for me. We will pray, lay hand, pour oil. you. And then what do we say? Go back home and simple. Pastor may pick your midnight call once or twice. Pastor, talk to your son or he's beating me. Ah. He said, put Robert on the phone. Robert, what happened now? He said, tell your daughter to be submissive. Put your, husband, put your wife on the phone. Daughter, the husband said, you are not submitting. He said, daddy, how can I submit? He said, please submit. Give your husband the phone. Your husband said, I have told my daughter to submit. Put phone to your wife again. I have told your husband that you will submit. Give phone to your wife again. And then, what else are we going to do? Praise the Lord. What else are we going to do? And then after a while, the pastor will say, put it on speakerphone, I'm tired. <laughs> Amen. The pastor will not judge the matter. Manage two of you. Amen. Amen. Marriage is not meant to be like that. And that is why before you enter, before you enter, Study the word of God clearly about issue of family. You shouldn't marry without reading at least two or three Christian family books. I call somebody that got married uh, in Germany those days, and I asked him, have you read any book on Christian family? He said, no. I said, you will fail. You will fail. Before you go and marry, read Christian books, Christian family books, to know how a Christian family functions. The fact that your mom and dad were married for 50 years does not mean that they are a success. You know how many times your mommy cried in the kitchen when you were not there? You know how many times she went to the toilet and cried? And when she was crying, she cleaned them. Junior, mommy, are you okay? Yes. You don't know. You don't know. They hid it from you. Amen. And there's a wonderful book, I think one of the best I've read, by Dr. Casey Price, The Christian Family. If you can get it, read that book. No, read it before you get married. It will be foolishness for you to enter into a Christian marriage without knowing what Christian family is all about. If possible, you and the person that wants to marry should read it together and agree together. It's not a Nigerian that wrote that book. It's not a Nigerian pastor. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Readers are leaders. Read. Read. Praise the Lord. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 5, the Bible said in your relationship with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. Again, talking about our relationship. Talking about our relationship. In your relationship with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, being in the very nature God, being God, but did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. He is God. But he decided to lose the benefit of being God. That's what the Bible says. Verse 7, rather he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant. Jesus made himself as nothing. He took the place of a servant the Lord of all creation. He made himself as nothing. I said to you, submission is about relinquishing. You relinquish control. You relinquish what you are. You submit to another. You submit to another. This is the example that Jesus is showing us. He said he made himself like human. He became like a human. He chose to suffer like humans. And you, you are not willing to submit as a servant. But Jesus became less than a servant. From divinity to humanity is a big uh, uh, demotion. 
It's not some, you know, you know, when a poor man acts a rich man, it's a good one. Isn't it? When a rich man acts a poor man, believe me, you tell him to sleep and face me and face you, mosquito will bite him. It's not an easy thing. But when you take a poor man from face me and face you and put him in a mansion, he say, ah, life is good. You bring a rich man and put him in the same face me and face you, he say, God forbid. You know, during the time of uh, Sani Abacha, when they were doing the Fair Bank Tribunal, many of the bankers were put in prison in Lagos. Are you hearing me? Many of the bankers are borrowed money without paying. They were put in prison. And you know, the prison was so horrible, they decided to renovate all the prisons. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The police got a bonus. Ikoyi prison was modernized. Kirikiri was modernized. Not by government, but the inmates. Because the prison got powerful inmates. Amen? Come on, I know about this. It's not that they told me. I know. They created, they made air conditions to work. In the prison, they have to make it work because they were there. Look at bank director. He said, please, what can we do here? He said, um, <laughs> repent it. They say, how much? They say, we'll write a check. In prison, they stole money. Are you hearing? Every evening, their family will bring food to them. They have a special, they created a special room. They built it with AC in the same prison. You think prison is prison? You are lying. Even in prison, there, is, there are levels. Are you hearing me? There, there are levels. Prosperity gives you flexibility. Only poor man goes to true prison. No, I'm telling you, this is not what they said. I am telling you the truth that still exists today. Amen. The rich have a different uh, apartment in prison. Weekend, they have a party. In prison. Yes, in prison. Sometimes they even have a real party. They bring their women for them. Oh. May you never be poor in Jesus' mighty name. It is the poor that suffers the most. If he is not who he is, he will be in prison. Donald Trump, I'm telling you. Even him knows it. One of the American uh, broadcasters said that if he did half of the things Donald Trump had done, he would be, she would be in prison. And she's right. So don't go about and saying that uh, everybody is the same. No, there's nowhere human beings are the same. Nowhere. Nowhere. In submission, level changes. Are you hearing me? In submission. Look at what happened to Jesus in verse 8. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death. Even death on a cross, he died a shameful death. Verse 9. Read what follows after. Verse 9, everybody. Is that in your Bible? Yes, sir. After submission, therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. People want part B without part A. That's the problem. God said, I will honor those that honor me. You honor God. You glorify God. You give unto the Lord liberally. You will never lack good things. You know, you know, while mommy was reading the devotional and said, don't give God leftovers. And she just said it. And I was just meditating. I asked, wait, just there. And the Spirit of God said to me, he said, those that gives him leftover always have nothing. Praise the Lord. But those that give him all and stay on the leftover never lack anything. Just this morning, I got that. Those that give God's leftover always in lack. They're always left with nothing. But those that give all to God and end up with leftover, they give God their best. And they have leftover for themselves. 
it is not over for them. God will always multiply the leftover. God will always multiply the leftover. Praise the Lord. It is better to have a multiplied leftover than to have abundance that is not blessed by God. It may be difficult when you are letting go that sacrifice, that offering. It may be difficult for you. But that is the crossroad you need to cross. That's the barrier you need to break. Start. Submit yourself to God. Submit yourself to God. Submit yourself to the word of God. The word of God will only work to those that are submitted to it. Jesus is our perfect example. He made himself as nothing. He became nothing. Praise the Lord. Please, today. Please, today. Have a change of heart. Stop living like a rebel. Stop living like a lawless person. When we say, be in a department, that's the point of submission in church. You come under an authority. You come under an authority. And it is for your own good. They will give account for your soul. Praise the Lord. You come under an authority. You submit to an authority. You obey instructions. Whatever you discover from the word of God, you follow it. Whatever the Bible says you should do, you do it. You do it. Stop selecting who to obey and who not to obey. He said, you telling me this. At least if his pastor will consider you. You, now me and you join this church at the same time. It is true that you may join this church at the same time, but spiritually overtaking is allowed. Amen. You can join the church at the same time, but a month later, you were overtaken. That is why Paul said to us that we should work out our salvation with fear and trembling. Overtaking is allowed in this race. Amen. Didn't Jesus say that the first shall be the last? Who do you want to be? Be who the word of God says you should be. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Say submission. submission. Say submission. submission. Brings, blessings. Brings blessings. Brings prosperity. Brings prosperity. Say lawlessness. And rebellion, and rebellion, it brings suffering, it brings suffering. And, disgrace. and disgrace. I will not be there. I will, be I will be in submission. I will, submission. I will enjoy grace will enjoy every day of my life. Of my Praise life. the Lord. Hallelujah. Do you agree to that? Yes. You take steps to be under authority. Did you notice that all the men that served Tinibu from the time he was governor in Lagos State, all those men are still rising with him? Did you notice that? All those that was obedient. Listen to Tinibu. Listen to Tinibu. He said when Buhari became president, it was his position to be vice president. Listen to him. And why? he was right. He said, but I said I don't want... He doesn't want to be vice president. He wants to be president. He said, I appointed somebody else to take my place. Are you hearing me? Listen to great men. You may listen to You, you are just busy talking. Tell me is Muslim, 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 Muslim. You that's Christian, Christian, what have you done? No, you that's Christian, what have you done? He anointed somebody to take the place of Listen, the person he appointed was a pastor. Pastor Osibanjo. It was not Pastor Adebe that put him, made him vice president. Too. Are you hearing me? Listen clearly. Tinibu made him, and he cannot deny it. He made him vice president. Submission. Submission. How many of you remember Ambode? Did he do a good job? Why was he not re-elected? <laughs> no. Why was he not re-elected? He served you well, right? Everybody said he did a good job, right? 
but he disobeyed the master. True or false? It, this is not a hidden story. Now it, is on, it was on the paper. He went and begged. He carried uh, traditional rulers. He went to the table said, no, you can't make it again. Didn't you vote for him to return? No, didn't you vote for him to return? People voted for him to return. But the power that be said you cannot be. He did all he could. He couldn't because what? He was out of order. He was out of what? Order. And the man walked. And he walked well. And that is why. That is the way it is between us and God. Though. Good work will not take you to heaven. Stop relying on what? You are a good person. You don't lie. You can say, look at that one. He's a drunkard. That one steals. That one. Yeah, he steals and does that. But he's broken before God. He's broken before God. You, you don't steal. You don't lie. You don't cheat. You don't fornicate. You don't do anything. But when you are praying, you are praying like this. Lord, you know. I'm not like some people. And your prayer will become an abomination before the Lord. Because no man justifies himself before God. And the one that has done all this sin, when he's about to pray, he will lie down. He will be rolling. He said, Lord, please. I'm not denying what I have done. <laughs> Lord, if you cast me away, where will I go? In his prayer, he's totally broken. Broken. You, you can't even kneel down talking about rolling on the floor for God. He said, nobody will make me kneel down. No, devil has knelt you down permanently. Praise the Lord. Submission. Ambode served the people well, but he didn't serve his master well. He was entitled to second time, but he didn't get it. Till now, you have not heard about him, have you? He went back to school after that. Oh, yes, he went to study more to learn obedience. <laughs> the Bible said, if you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. You will eat the good of the land. Submit yourself. Listen, there is good in every land. There is a way you will live your life. You will know whether Nigeria is hard or not. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Many of you that live in Eden, you don't know what is happening in Nigeria. Do I have a witness in the house? Yes, sir. It's the truth. It's the truth. Yes, you know? Praise the Lord. There was a day that our generator did not come on on time because they were working on something, blah, 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 blah. Then uh, one of our daughters called me. He said, Daddy, life has never been off here. He said, this is like U.S. There's always light in there. What happened? Can you imagine? She's even questioning me what happened. <laughs> you know why? She has gotten used to life. She has gotten used to what? Life. Get used to good things. And that's what happened in Christ. Every good and perfect thing comes from the Lord. If you are under Christ, you will see good and perfect things. Jesus cannot give you what he does not have. And Jesus does not have suffering. He already took your suffering. He took our pain. He took our sickness. He took our diseases. When you come to Christ, he cannot give you what he does not have. Full stop. There are things that if you are looking for, you have to go to the devil and get it. He said, life, now suffer, suffer. He said, go to the devil. He said, every day you are getting old. Go to the devil. devil gives old age. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, change your mentality. Change your Bring yourself under authority. Yourself under authority. That it may be well with you. Well with you. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. 